IQ Season 4, Episode 16. Still buzzing from the Tanaka episode. Never gonna look at this guy the same again, even though I already loved him. Nice to see the relationship is, is working out. Oh, we're, are we focusing on Nekoma? I think I might see where this is going. Of course, I can't be sure that's going to happen, but it seems likely that a head-to-head -head between Karsuno and Nakoma is on the way. I think one common element of a lot of the best shows I've watched is that at least a very large part of the, the stories were conceived as a whole from the beginning. You know, I think some stories, they kind of just launch and then there's this idea of, okay, well, now we're just going to continue it. Nakoma was set up very early on in season one and we've been following them ever since. We've, our destinies seem closely linked. And in general, the show has been excellent at weaving these long running threads that pop up even when I, I don't expect them or see them coming. I imagine that a rewatch of the show would be very rewarding in terms of noticing things really early on. I wonder if, if Kemma will have a moment. I wonder if his moment's coming. Thanks, Dad. The shock for me is that he said, even I. <laughs> Alright. Yeah, I mean, I think the only reason that would ever be unsatisfying is the fact that we're watching a show about volleyball. So that's our whole world. But it's perfectly reasonable, and I think it's admirable. Like, not everything that I do is an ultimate passion, and that's fine. Not everything has to be an ultimate passion. In fact, I think it's a credit to Kenma that despite the fact that, at least from what he's saying, as far as he is expressing, it's not an ultimate passion for him, he takes it seriously and, and crushes it. You can't say the same thing about other characters in other <laughs> areas of life that are not volleyball. For example, certain characters and their grades. Using that specific example, I think that was a, a big mistake that I made as an adolescent. I feel pretty convicted in the fact that school was not the ultimate thing for me and it really wasn't my path and it was never going to be my passion. It's just counter to my personality. I still could have crushed it. I could have done well nonetheless. There was no reason not to really or there was no reason not to fully apply myself just in terms of the, the potential doors that could have opened. You know, why not? If you're going to do something, you may as well try to do it well. And in many cases, like for example, a club activity or sport, not doing something is fine. Leaving something is reasonable, especially if that allows more resources to do things that are more useful or more enjoyable or whatever. You know, there is something really powerful about uh, if you really like games, finding an analogy for, for life. It's really weird to say because games are just a, a tiny subset of life, but maybe that helps condense lessons in a, in a very palatable and understandable form because you're stripping away the risk and fear and getting to some root psychological things like, like you said, leveling up, growth, management, figuring out tactics. If you can take that and extrapolate it to the world at large, I guess. I understand that sentiment. I think it's really cool. When we were really young, me and my sister used to play The Sims together. And I remember her saying once, I wish life were The Sims. And at the time I couldn't get it. I thought it was ridiculous because life is so much more than The Sims. The Sims is life, but like tiny and constrained. On another level though, I, I get what she means. It's it's a feeling of growth. It's a feeling of control. It's a feeling of like nurturing things, living life in a way that is play and stress-free for you, maybe not for your Sims, whatever, you know, any analogy that helps process the world. That itself is a, a real skill. To play games. <laughs> That's pretty clever. And actually, I have a similar experience. I'm taking that to mean that they hang out, that we just haven't really seen much of it, which is cool. It's just his lens. I think there's just something universal about really like focusing and, and focusing on and loving something where if it's deep enough, it, it will be almost everything. It will contain almost all the lessons of the world. It could be anything, any any pursuit. I think it just depends how you pursue it. Obviously, for a lot of these characters, it's volleyball. 
Yeah, they're just gonna re replace that footage with something of Oikawa, even though he's not even playing. About that, getting up at 2am to play games. When I was a kid, I finally managed to get a, a PlayStation, but I was heavily discouraged from playing it. But in the summer between 6th and 7th grade, I got a paperboy job. So I would get up at like 5am to pack papers and stuff, and I would do my route, which took about an hour. And I would get home at maybe 8 or something. And that allowed me like 4 or 5 hours of uninterrupted, no guilt, freedom to play games. And that was one of the... It's weird to say, but it was, it was like one of the best summers. I'm so happy to have escaped childhood and be an adult and be able to do what I want. But there's something extra precious about that feeling like when you're restricted from doing something and then you, you find these pockets where you could just breathe and you know you can get away with gaming or whatever it is this guy best coach huh knowing this coach he's just happy to see people doing well this is such a wholesome. I don't know, this feels so wholesome. They're just a couple watching volleyball and discussing it. Playing the long game, maybe. Wait, he did say he hates running. It's kind of funny too that the, the Slytherin guy is the one recognizing the, the deviousness. Oh, that's a lot of respect. But I think it's been well established that he's a pretty fierce competitor. You risk like waking him up. Ah, uh, refreshing running. <laughs> Same, honestly. <laughs> He's envisioning the... He really likes it. He really takes it seriously. Whatever gets you through, running. I've definitely been there. I mean, maybe not with the, the roof climbing, but one thing I took away from games that I feel was hugely important was an understanding of compound interest. I can't even remember what game it was, but I can mention other games since then, like uh, the real estate game in Yakuza 0, where you realize how quickly things can scale if you're building positive interest. And I think because of the context in which I learned it, there's something really gamified about it for me that, that gives me a thrill. It's really fun. At least the, the scenery is breathtaking. I was running through the Bronx. <laughs> Not quite like that. Gotta have more guts. Yeah, Kem is that, that kid that surprises you by what he can do. One thing that's clear though is that his teammates really like him. I think I was saying something related about the Mia twins and Asumu, where if you get to know someone well enough and their core is good, you end up loving them not just despite their eccentricities, but partly because of them, like they're an enhancement. Kemba is the quiet, sort of stern gamer kid that you can't help but respect. <laughs> This guy's a workhorse with no spotter. <laughs> Takes guts. Oh, that's right. Yeah, I get it. He works so hard. Kemba is seemingly taking it easy, but is still crushing it. That hurts. Good luck not thinking about that all night until the next game. Really interesting comparison. Kemba's obviously a naturally talented person. You could also imagine the fact that he's a little bit detached, being an asset at times, because he's a little bit more emotionally free. It just means so much to uh, Yamamoto. It's so kind of a test because it takes a lot to hear this from him. Yeah. <laughs> Bro, 
Whatever you're lacking, it's not guts. Bakema's been noticing him too. I mean, they, they, they both are on each other's radar and that, and for different reasons. They compliment each other. Yeah, I was just going to provoke him. I, I don't think he meant that intentionally, but... Got him. Let him hash it out. This is good. This is them clearing the space. There you go, some fight. <laughs> Damn, they got the hose. Dostoyevsky. Wow, Batman Forever flashbacks. Okay, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's such a great compliment. Maybe Kenma can spot him this time. Oh, there you go, he has a spotter. It's a good senpai. Let's keep tabs on him. This is all. This is all respect, though. Yeah, it just seems like he also really enjoys applying his mind to stuff and strategy and what have you. <laughs> this is gonna roll so nicely into the present, where they're trying to take advantage of Kenma's physical weaknesses. He's like an unlikely leader, but it's it's cool to just recognize what he has, his gifts. <laughs> That's great. It was only gonna go that way. I mean, you could tell from the beginning. Like, it's such a classic thing. This has come up in a lot of shows. It's the potential for really great friendships and connections through rivalries and things that start with negative emotions. Such a clear and well-written example. In cases like this that I think are pretty common in life, hating on someone or feeling riled up by someone is a sign of respect. Fear is a sign of respect. Jealousy is a, is a big sign of respect. And it often comes from a self-perceived weakness that one does not know how to properly address. And so, in a sense, the other person contains the answer to something fundamental for one's growth. It's especially great and powerful when both people are that for each other. But that's such a, a great line, you know, the one to the effect of, but I'm so glad he's on our side. Very, very rough way of saying let's be friends. Get the water, get the hose again. Oh, nice. Jump forward. The happiest coach on earth. Yeah, but I, he's been training with Tora, no doubt. Nah, nah, nah no way. <laughs> I know it, you can see it already. You know it's gonna be great. He's tired, but he's ready, and he hates losing. I mean, I would say in some level, I have a. I, I don't know if I call it a rivalry necessarily, but a little bit of keeping track, keeping an eye on the skill levels, the successes, the progress, the abilities of almost all my best friends. It's complicated. There's a lot that goes into it. Part of it, I think, is that your settings, your environment, sets the bar for what you expect from yourself. And so, being around people who are really great at certain things, especially in areas that you yourself would like to be successful, it just raises your bar. It, it's hard not to notice it and pay attention to it. And I think it's a, it's a good thing as long as there's no negativity, as long as there's nothing antagonistic about, about that feeling. For me, I won't say all of it, but most of it, it feels positive. It's it's like admiration and respect and a feeling that there's this vacuum I need to fill. Like, man, I really cannot slack in this area anymore. I don't want to get left too far behind, etc. I can simultaneously have all that and still be really thrilled by their successes. For these two, there's something really important about them because they're both falling into a, a similar trap where when you have a very strong muscle to flex, it feels good to work out that muscle. If you get past a certain point of competency in one particular skill, it gets increasingly more fun to develop that skill further. Like something they said early on in the show, it's when you really know how to play that you can really start having fun. The flip side of that is that weaker muscles, weaker skills get neglected because they're rougher. It's harder to pick them up. It's harder to work on them. There's less reward.
rewarding feedback from them early on. And so you end up getting unbalanced and skewed in one direction. You, you follow the things that are already really powerful and neglect the things that are perhaps demanding attention that are the most glaring weaknesses or, or dangers. That's clearly the case for Torah and Kenma in ways that are complementary. You know, you want to use your dominant skill to power through every problem when perhaps that's not the right tool for, for this particular job. I think having a specialty, having a very, very strong element in a particular stat, to put it in terms Kenma would like, is not a bad thing. It can be great. But in something as complex as volleyball or just generally life, it's good to be a little more fluid, not using a hammer for every single job, having a diverse tool set at your disposal. To be honest, I often am a little bit trepidatious when I see an episode is going to focus on someone other than Garcino. But I think this was really great. It was really well done. It gave me an increased sense of appreciation for both Kenma and Tora, which I imagine is only going to enhance the future when I think there's the inevitable matchup between Garcino and Nekoma. Thank you.